Bob, you remember the power water unit that we designed some years ago? Yes, Frank, I do, because the old structure is very dilapidated, very old school. Obviously on an island, everything's got to be off grid. You don't have any other choice. Right. And, um, you know, the first phase system was just really just to be functional, just for a small purpose. Now we wanted to really be able to beef up energy and water in one self-contained unit, including a wastewater treatment plant. Let me show you around this thing. Awesome. So capacity is obviously an issue all times of the year. Most of the times of the year, because we're in the tropics, we're going to be able to capture it from rainwater. But other times of the year, we have a reverse osmosis generator. Obviously, the energy is required to fuel that to be able to create additional water supply. And water in, water out. So I've got a wastewater system. It's a tertiary system, aerobic. Uh, gives me good VODs at the end, a UV light, and then it goes into a water garden that we're about to construct. So a really tight package, something that is easily replicable and pretty cost efficient. Also, the design, I think, is a score. What do you think the footprint here, Frank, that we're looking at is size? Well, we get about 25 feet by about 15 foot footprint and then that enables us to have these great freshwater showers outdoors because when you're out in the tropics there is absolutely nothing better than having a nice freshwater rinse before you get back in the boat. Also two restroom facilities with freshwater sinks and the utility cabinets that I talked to you about as well as this access area that can use as storage as well as access to the tanks and easy access to the underside of the panels which you can see are here exposed. Okay, obviously now we're at sort of the back of the house. <laughs> There's generation one that you're referring to. Pretty campy, functional for a time period, but now is the time to build this up. So we've got our energy utility cabinet here, and our water pump room here, and then you can see the levers that we use for good air circulation. We'll probably have to add a fan in the utility room for the energy because we've got a battery system in there, especially in the tropics. Those can get pretty steamy. Right. We also learned that we had to get a little kick out to get rain away from that because during certain times of the year, you know, it's almost raining vertical. So this had to be created as a very robust but very functional space for the actual back of house infrastructure. I like how it's very compact, very concise, with a lot of activity going on. Okay, now we're in the front of the house, Bob, and even though they don't have the ADA, Americans with Disability Act, we still wanted to incorporate those features where people are coming over that have disabilities. So we bought the ramp as well as giving good turnaround space inside the restroom stalls. We even had the wood shop get a little men's and women's logo above each door. Right. So again, taking advantage of, you know, limiting limited footprint, trying to make something that's comfortable for all types of people that are coming to this island. And you know, just trying to make it feel like it belongs in this environment as well. Right. I think you did an awesome job elevating the platform up, keeping things as natural as possible on the ground level. Everything's a very compact unit, very functional, awesome job. Thank you. And the other thing, in raising it up, obviously there are issues of, of weather, but also accessibility. It really makes it easier for the guys to be able to access plumbing particularly, um, and being able to get underneath the building. Right? And it looks great within this area that we're in right now. Now, tell me, I came here some time ago, not that long. These palms were very small. Are these the same palm trees that you import these in from from uh, the mainland? Nope, uh, we took a really patient approach to the development of this island. In this big area that we're in right now, it's about three acres, it's completely uh, fill. So there was, as you may remember, there was nothing here. Well, we did have some mature coconuts on the north side of the island that was dropping coconuts and the protocol or lack of protocol at the time was just kind of throw them in the bush. Well, they would sprout in there and then we saw that as a prime opportunity to go ahead and actually start doing plantation. So uh, as the nuts would sprout, we'd let them get so big and then we just started planting them out here in the environment. Fast forward four or five years and there we have it. We have this canopy and there's about 350 coconuts that now take up and comprise in about a three acre area. Yeah. And the entire interior is now cool. Right. And green. Right. And very tropical. Yeah, just being under the canopy here, it cools it off it be anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees just by being underneath here. And in a very short amount of time from now, this is going to create a great umbrella, if you will, to be able to stroll through here and have a nice organic garden belt. That's it. And we just take the bounty of what nature gives us, which we have shell for calcium. 
Um, we have the seaweed, which gives us a really good sort of mulchy type of a fertilizer, which the coconut trees love. And maybe just a little bit of potash or uh, perhaps some lime, and that really gets them kicking up. Take a few years to get that big root ball going, but once they get that root ball, they start shooting up. And the best part from a landscape planner like yourself, if I do plan on doing something else here on the island, these things are easily transplantable, even when they're mature. Right, perfect selection. All right, Bob, and this is the side where we have the showers, freshwater showers. So I've got a little water bib over here. If I need to hose something off, hose the deck off. One of the little trouble points that we had, though, was that window. Even though I created a functional louver there, so it's open and closed, this is the energy room, and it obviously needs some ventilation. But what we were finding is the weather is coming in from north-northeast, blowing right in here and throwing water into our inverter. You got any suggestions? Well, one thing that we've seen commonly uh, in this condition, Frank, is to put a fan. You know, that's an option that you create kind of more of a solid surface but to allow the fan to kind of circulate and get air, air out of that uh, room because it generates so much heat from the battery. So maybe that's something to consider. One other would be to create more of an eyebrow, bring the, the roof line down here so that when the prevailing winds and uh, salt spray and rain come in, it diverts the, the water away and it drops it down away from the roof. Okay, I like both of those and maybe we'll try one and then maybe try the architectural second. Right. The last thing was I've got my water drainage coming from the wastewater treatment. Obviously, I've got black water and gray water, and I'm treating those through two separate systems. But here, once that flow comes out, I'm thinking about maybe drip irrigation and being able to actually cover some of these lower areas with maybe some lush landscape. Do you think it'll work? Yeah, certainly, because you know you have this skirt here that you need the circulation and ventilation through. But to do some lower storage planting, just to kind of dress it up a little bit, just. To to hide some of your piers, your concrete piers, these things that are elevated up, and any other utilities that you have below. Great idea. Thanks, yeah. Bob. Appreciate all your influence. Yeah. All right. Thanks from the Reserve Island here at Reserve Belize.